Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson. Today, we are going to take another new address in a topic that is matrices. And what we are going to learn first in this main topic is how to find the dimension of a matrix. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student will be able to find the dimension of a matrix. This is what I hope you'll be able to do after completing the very lesson today. So as usual, in your favorite segment of the lesson, most is fun. Today, I'll give you another interesting number. This number, 1,729, is very, very special, very unique. I will tell you what is special about this very number after completing the lesson today, so don't go away. My dear student, to begin the lesson, let me first explain what is a matrix. A matrix is a rectangular array or arrangement of real numbers. Let's just have a typical examples of matrix. You have uh, matrix A, that is capital letter A equals to. Then you now have a square bracket open, then inside that square bracket, you now arrange your numbers in rectangular pattern. So in this case, you have matrix A with numbers inside this square bracket 2 and minus 3 as numbers in the first line and in the second line 0 and 1. Another matrix is B, look at it, capital letter B equals to, then you have your square bracket inside, you have 1, 7, 4 as numbers in the first line, and 10 minus 2 minus 3 as numbers in the second line. So this is a rectangular arrangement because uh, the number of numbers in each line are the same. If you have uh, three numbers in the first line and three numbers in the second line, which means the arrangement here is rectangular. If I go back to the first one, you have two, two numbers in each line, so it is rectangular. So moving to the third one, capital letter C equals to, you have one, one number each in each line and you have three lines there. So this is also another rectangular arrangement of numbers. And this is samples of what we call the matrix. So numbers in each matrix are now arranged in rows. So we have what we call rows and we have what we call columns. Let's start to explain what is row. So row are those lines that I keep seeing. So this is first line, so it's called the first row. This is the second line, so it is called the second row. So let's just move to the column. Column are the vertical lines. You have one and ten as elements in the first column. Seven and minus two as the element in the second column, and four as the minus three as the element in the third column. So there are three columns here, two rows. So this is the rectangular arrangement, and we now have rows and columns. So let me just move the dimension of the matrix. So to do that dimension of a matrix, let's consider this typical example of a matrix A. With the entries A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, I will explain the meaning of this. So this is a matrix, and this are just the entries for the elements inside that matrix. So this matrix above has two rows, and it has three columns. So if you count the number of lines, you see one line, another line, is meaning it has two lines, which means it has two rows. And look at the vertical lines, one, two, three. So it has three columns. There it is, dimension will now be, 2 by 3, or 2 by 3 like this. This is 2 by 3. That is by is now written in words B, Y, or it can be written in this symbol of multiplication, 2 by 3. This will now be the dimension of this matrix, which means uh, the matrix has to two rows and three columns. So the number of rows is what you write first of that very matrix, and uh, followed by the number of columns. This is what we mean by the dimension of matrix. It's telling us how many rows and how many columns are there in that very matrix. So the entries, I, just like I have said, I will explain what uh, this one, one, A1, one, two, A1, one, three. So this entries, A1, two, for example, and A2, one, for example, represent respectively the elements in the first row and the second column. 
that is if I take this A12, look at A12, A12. This means element in the first row and in the second column. So this number one represented the row and the next one represented the column. So A12 means uh, element in the first row and the second column. Similarly, A21. A21, you see what comes first it represented the row. What comes second represented the column. So A21, which is here, represented the element in the second row and the first column. So this is the meaning of this entry A21. So if I ask you A22, now tell me it is element in the second row and the second column. This A23 means element in the second row, third column. So this is the meaning. It's just a notation of those elements in each uh, in each matrix. So he wanted to represent element first row, second column, and he to want to represent element in the second row, but the first column. This is the meaning. So let me just use this a few concepts and take some examples. Example number one, it says let this matrix A have this entries to two and minus three. 0 and 1. Another matrix B, 1, 7, 4 in the first row, 10 minus 2 minus 3 in the second row, and C like that. So the question asked here is to find, uh, is to find the dimension of this very matrix. So dimension of the matrix A, this is matrix A. Remember dimension, what we do first is to identify how many rows and how many columns, then we write to it is row first, uh, and it is a column. So the measure of this matrix, you can see it is having two rows, one, two, and two columns, one, two. So the measure of this matrix will now be equals to two by two, meaning it has two rows and two columns. This is the dimension of this very matrix. If I move to the second matrix, that is matrix B. It is dimension. Just check how many rows are there. How many columns are there? I can see one, two rows, and one, two, three columns. So this matrix B with its dimension is now going to be two by three. The row first, then the letter you now write the columns. And if I move to the next matrix, matrix C, it is dimension will now be how many rows can you see? I can count one, two, three rows. Uh, and the column is just one column. So therefore, the dimension of matrix C will now be three by one, meaning it has three rows and one column. This is what we now do to write the dimension of a matrix. You see, this is very simple, but you can be asked in your question. So let me just move and take one more example. It says, let this matrix B have this entries to zero and three in the first row. 17 minus 2 and minus 6 in the second row. The question asked here is to find B2, 3 and B1, 2. We used this small letter B because this matrix is used, is we use the capital letter B to signify the name of this very matrix. So the entries will now be small letter of that very letter used in naming the matrix. Solution to this very problem. So starting with the very first one, that is B2, 3, B2, 3. This first number represented the row, and the second number represented the column. So this means uh, element in the second row and the third column. Second row, third column. So look at the element, second row, third column. It is this uh, minus 6. It is this minus 6 that is equals to this B. 2,3. So I'm going to write uh, minus 6 there. So I'll take the second question. That is B. 1,2. 1,2. So 1 represented the row. Then 2 represented the column. Always first number is row. Second is the column. So there is now seen uh, element in the first row, second column. It will now be this very 0. Look at it. It is this that is in the first row, second column, that is B1, 2. 
and it is this that we will now write as zero. So B12 will now be equals to zero. My dear students, this is the end of this very lesson. I hope with the few examples given, you'll be able to write uh, or identify the measure of the matrix. Thank you for your attention. Let me just move to the last segment. Mars is fun and give you what is special about the number 1,729. So what is special about this very number 1,729? It says it's the smallest number that can be expressed as sum of two cubes in two different ways. This number, there is no any other number smaller than this number that can be expressed as sum of two cubes and those two, two cubes in two different ways. So let's just see how we can express this number in a sum of two cubes. So 1729 can be rewritten as 1 raised to 3 plus 13 raised to 3. These two cubes numbers, if you add them together, you get the number 1729 back. The same time, 1729 can be rewritten as another sum of two different cubes. That is uh, 9 raised to 3 and 10 raised to 3. If you now find what is 9 raised to the power of 3 and 10 raised to the power of 3, if you add the two results, what you are getting is the number 1729. So this is what is special about this number. We see more of this amazing things in mathematics in our subsequent lesson.